and welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here each and every week to talk to interesting people and talk about interesting subjects, and the guy we got today can do both of those. He is indeed interesting in all respects. He knows more about what's going on in locally and nationally than anybody we can get our hands on, and uh, we have our hands on him often, but never seemingly often enough. Mike McCarville is going to be on again today. Yes, he is. Mike McCarville coming up today on The Verdict. Stay with us. Driving rain, blistering heat, and bitter cold. 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. Chesapeake drills nonstop for natural gas on American soil. Chesapeake drills more new gas wells than anyone else. And from those wells, collects the most drilling information and acquires more 3D seismic images, leveraging every efficiency to improve the odds of finding more natural gas every day with every well we drill. The better job we do of discovering bigger reserves of clean, burning American natural gas, the greater the prosperity of our nearby communities, our state, and our nation. And as long as there are more gas reserves to be found here in the U.S., we will never rest. Chesapeake. Natural gas wins the day. Back on the verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Just as a record breaking uh, event for us today, we had a tie on who'd been on the verdict most between uh, two illustrious individuals, the Honorable Brad Henry and uh, also Mike McCarville. He's honorable in our eyes, even if he doesn't carry that title. Well, the tie is now broken. Mike McCarville is our guest today again for the tenth time, setting a new verdict record over our almost seven years of uh, air, mm -hmm. our shows. Uh, Mike, of course, is a former talk show host with KTOK. He has his own political blog. He's a political pundit. He knows what's going on. His, uh, his uh, fingers are on the pulse of what's happening in the state and the nation. Mike, welcome back for visit number 10. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I appreciate the gold-plated coffee mug today in honor of number 10. It's nice to see somebody breaking records that's never been accused of taking steroids. Thank and you very much. I've no, no never one, been no accused of a crime. Of <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell us what's really going on in the uh, Steve Phipps, Gene Stipes saga oh, there. Is, is this not turned into just a, a huge mess? Uh, for those who might not be aware, and I mm -hmm. can't imagine there'll be too many, uh, particularly in your audience, but uh, basically, it's a federal investigation into alleged corruption in southeastern Oklahoma, having to do with the use of state and, we've got to assume, some federal funds to fund some entities owned by this Steve Phipps, who has been partners with former state senator Gene Stipe in what I describe as an abstract company empire that literally uh, nine different abstract companies all over the state. Uh, and the funneling of uh, money from uh, Phipps entities into the hands of others, some of that money eventually wound up in political campaigns. We call them straw donors, Mick. Uh, uh, in other words, Ill making illegal campaign donations to both federal and state campaigns. <clears throat> so the feds, of course, have honed in on this from the federal aspect, federal campaigns. Uh, and we know already that uh, some of this uh, illegal money was uh, funneled into the campaigns without their knowledge of uh, Governor Henry, of uh, Congressman Dan Boren, uh, and some other folks. <clears throat> and we've got to assume that sometime, at one point or another, the state has got to take a look at the state implications. A uh, totally different thing than the federal, of course. So the question uh, before us now is, you know, is the state going to, going to go after uh, the possible illegal state campaign donations? 
And where is this federal investigation going to go? We've had, uh, you know, State Senator Gene Stipe, former State Senator Stipe involved, Steve Phipps. Uh, we've had uh, former State Representative Mike Mass involved. Other legislators' names have come well, up. Well, he's, he's uh, been sentenced, has he not? Oh, or yes. About to oh, be sentenced? yes, yes. And, and where we're at right now uh, is that uh, so many of these people, uh, Steve Phipps, for example, has, uh, has entered a guilty plea uh, and is talking to prosecutors. Uh, so we've got to assume he's passing along information. And I think the, the primary attention is focused right now on Auditor and Inspector Jeff McMahon, uh, who has not been uh, implicated in this whole scandal yet, but he has been interviewed three times by agents of the FBI over a two-year period. And just last week, uh, he, his attorney sat down with federal prosecutors and FBI agents, as did his wife and her attorney in different meetings in McAllister. Now, ordinarily, when that happens, that's a sign one of two things is going on. <clears throat> Somebody's trying to cut a plea deal, or the prosecutors are saying, you provide us uh, additional information and no charges will be filed, that kind of thing. So exactly what's going on, we don't know. We do know that records were seized from McMahon's home in uh, Tecumseh, as was an item of jewelry from his wife's sister's home, said to be a set of diamond earrings that ostensibly was paid for by Steve Phipps. And the, the important point there is that as Auditor and Inspector, Jeff McMahon regulates, licenses uh, the, uh, the abstract industry, abstractors and the whole abstract industry. And as such, he cannot accept anything of value from anybody involved in that industry. So the diamond earrings mm -hmm. become the big question. So how serious this is for the Auditor, we don't know yet. And there's been all kinds of speculation, including some that I've thrown out there. Uh, but we'll see as time goes by. But well, it's now, a fascinating story uh, unfolding. <clears throat> I seem to remember Gary Jones in the past uh, making some allegations that uh, there's been some uh, yes, apparent Jones, wrongdoing. You're right, Ken. Jones, of course, was Mac Mahon's opponent uh, not only last year but four years before that uh, and is now the Republican state chairman. Uh, he's made some allegations. Uh, and again, that's the kind of thing, Will, time is going to show us whether those allegations are proved to be true. Do you uh, anticipate you've, there are several other legislators that, uh, that were involved that I guess have not been charged? Uh, yes, and there, there, of course, you can hear a story. You go into southeastern Oklahoma, and I was in McAllister not too long ago, and you can get a different story on every street corner yeah. about what is going on. Yeah. And there's also a very influential blog in McAllister, the McAllister Water Cooler, a couple of individuals who obviously are very knowledgeable about this whole thing regularly post, again, getting to the influence of uh, the, uh, the blogosphere these days. Uh, and there, there are some very additional serious allegations being made involving other members of Gene Stipe's family and what their involvement may or may not be in this whole thing. And other uh, officials in the city of McAllister, for example. So who knows where it's all going to wind up. Hmm. All right, controversy surrounding uh, specifically Senator Stipe. We uh, yes. know of his health issues yes. and, and his dealings with yes. the courts. Um, anything er else there that's coming down the line? Is, is this story pretty much wrapping up, or do you think I, it's, I, it's, it's well, I mean, evolving? It's my own opinion, Mick. I, I think Gene Stipe is going to wind up in federal prison. He's, he's on probation for a previous funny money uh, campaign involving yeah. congressional candidate Walt Roberts, his protege, years ago. Uh, on probation for that and now implicated in, an, in yet another scandal that occurred shortly after he, was, he, he admitted his guilt in, in the Walt Roberts federal campaign. And this, 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 these, all these new things occurred right after that. So obviously he was unrepentant. I mean, that's the federal position anyway. Uh, and I, I think they're going to revoke his probation and he's going to spend some prison time, even though he clearly is in not very good health. I think the question, of course, is his mental competency. And he says, hey, I'm fine. Quit saying I've got a mental problem because I deal with banks all the time. I borrow money. And even at age 80, with the kind of uh, financial empire that Stipe has built over the last five or six decades, uh, I mean, that's probably true. He probably is still very active. I think one of the startling things, I uh, don't have any idea about the truthfulness of it, and I almost hate to bring it up, but, but I'll still bring it up, uh, is just what you've mentioned, that he could be uh, convicted in the Walt Roberts thing and then just apparently turn around and do it again. And uh, not just in one campaign, this yeah. the second time. I mean, they're, they're, they're involved, as I said, the campaign of, uh, of uh, 
of Governor Henry, of, uh, of uh, Congressman Boren, uh, of, of other state, of McMahon's campaign. And in the case of Henry and uh, uh, Boren, they have returned uh, the money that is alleged to have been contributed illegally. The auditor has not done so because he doesn't have the money to return. Hmm. His campaign fund is broke. I mean, it is, it's, he ended the campaign out of money and he doesn't have any money to return. Hmm. So, uh, hmm. We need to take a break. We're just getting started though with Mike McCarville, as you can tell. We're getting Mike wound up. We'll be right back with more. Shining is taking responsibility. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, we know managing your health care can be overwhelming, and it's our job to help you meet the challenge. By guiding, supporting, and showing the way, we encourage you to gain control. Because we believe the best tool we can give you is the confidence to take charge. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma, shining through. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel. It didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. We're back on The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, and our guest, Mike McCarville. Mike, let's talk about the Oklahoma Lottery. What's going on out there oh, at my the commission's goodness. office? Well, I, I guess the, the, the bottom line is that, that the uh, revenue from the lottery has not met expectations. So the lottery needs to win the lottery. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And the, the expectations, I mean, let's, let's make it clear, the expectations for the financial return for the state, and thus education in the state, uh, were set, A, by Governor Brad Henry, when he was candidate Brad Henry, uh, and the first time around before, you know, before he was elected, talking about the lottery going to produce $500 million. Uh, shortly after he was elected, all of a sudden it was going to be $300 million. And his then state finance director, now state treasurer Scott Meacham, who was his primary advisor on the lottery, uh, even began to lower expectations after that. It was 180 million, 160 million, 150 million, 100 million. Well, where we are right now is the, the, the lottery is doing so poorly in the opinion of the lottery director that they're faced with cutting the budget and even cutting lottery commission staff members. So it's not going very well. And, and I think the, 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 the whole uh, the antis, if you will, the anti-lottery crowd has taken the position that, look, Brad Henry fibbed to us, Scott Meacham fibbed to us, uh, and now here's the proof. These years later, after the lottery started, here we are. The projections show that simply the lottery is not doing what anybody, any of our so-called leaders, said it was going to do, and uh, they must let us. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you this. Is it's producing revenue? It is. Just not enough. Right. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, to meet the projections. That, that's so correct. So I guess there is lottery money being funneled well, to the and, schools. And, now, and, and here is what is, we're going to be hearing about in, in the weeks to come, what we've heard about in the last few weeks, uh, Kent, is, is that the director of the Lottery Commission wants to change the percentage of the lottery proceeds that go to education. He wants to reduce it so he can maintain his advertising budget and keep the payroll where it is now, mm -hmm. the, the, the staff the same size. How could the numbers be so far off? 
I mean, uh, Brad Henry's an experienced politician. This is pre-governor. This is in the campaign, I understand. But you don't say it's going to be $500 million if you really believe it's going to be eighty. So I don't, I don't, I don't think he thought it was going to be eighty. Uh, don't know what he really believed, but but he couldn't have been that far off. I don't think I don't think he, he Let me give you a one-word on word answer to your question. Okay. Casinos, or a two-word answer. Yep. Tribal okay. casinos. So they they've impacted look, the lottery. Look, he viewed it as not look, how the lottery is look, today. Here, here here is the gambling money pile. In a state the size of Oklahoma, three point what three million people we right. are now, uh, that pool of money is only of such of, of one size. It isn't going to grow unless you start luring people in from out of the state, which is possible from Texas and other states, some of the casinos. Uh, it, it, with the growth of Indian casinos, and my goodness, we're, we're talking about, they're talking about doubling the size of one. We've got, we've got casinos uh, opening all over the place. Well, I we mean, have about 90 of them well, now we, in the we've state. We've got more than yeah. any other state, I think. So, so my point is, the, the amount of gambling money uh, uh, available for the state lottery, in my opinion, has shrunk because of all of the casinos. They're just, if people want to gamble, there are lots of opportunities, and going to a casino, in the minds of a lot of people, is a whole lot more fun than going into a convenience store and standing in line and getting cussed at by a guy who's trying mm -hmm. to pay his gas for his gas, standing behind you while you're scratching off a lottery ticket. Right. Is, is there any evidence that's having an impact on school bond issues? Because might there be people who say, look, I'm already playing the lottery. That's my money. That's supposed to fix education. Why do we need to have You know, that's issues? an excellent question. I've not seen any evidence yeah. of that, but yeah. um, perhaps it'll, it'll show up. I, yeah, I hear it brought that up. Could I, be. I, don't, I don't know if there's yeah. any evidence either, but it is a question that people bring up. Yeah that why am I voting a bond issue for schools when I thought all this lottery money was going well, to Well, there are a schools. lot of questions floating around uh, about the lottery and, the, and the so, all of the so-called social implications. I know the folks who, who are concerned with uh, addictive gambling are, uh, are now you're saying that, hey, this is becoming a, an even bigger problem in Oklahoma and it's going to continue to grow just as it has in every other state that has gone to, in essence, full-blown gambling uh, as we have with the tribal compacts and all the casinos and now with the lottery. Uh, th this is one of those topics. It is going to continue to produce fodder for uh, news reporters and for folks like us who sit around and discuss these things. Uh, and I, I, you know, you look at all the numbers associated with the lottery, I, I, I have a hard time trying to figure out how, for education, the lottery's going to get to $150 million, mm -hmm. much less three or four or $500 million. Right. All right, and Sandy Garrett, our superintendent of public instruction, is now starting to voice her own concerns about expectations having been set. It's just like House Bill 1017 in 1990. Yeah. It was sold to the people of Oklahoma as something that was going to, well, pretty well take care of education funding for a long time to come. It didn't take care of education funding for two years. Uh, we've had constant increases since then, and now the lottery was sold to a lot of people as, hey, this is going to, well, we got to do it for our kids. Yeah. And here we are, and Sandy Garrett is saying, whoa, now, wait wait a minute now. What's going on? Like a lot of people. All right, let's switch subjects. Senator okay. Inhofe, powerful Republican, yes, senior sir. senator from Oklahoma, up for re-election next year. Andrew Rice, the Oklahoma City State Senator, has announced to, that he's going to challenge him. Any reason to be concerned if, if you're an Inhofe fan? Uh, not in my opinion, but, but uh, let, me, let me say, just as I put my feet under your table here, gents, I've had my feet under Jim Inhofe's table in his home many times, so I'm probably not a, exactly an unbiased observer. Uh, but, but, the, but politically, Jim Inhofe is a tough, determined, skilled competitor. He has proven that many times. Uh, in 1994, when he first sought the Senate seat in that special election, Dave McCurdy, congressman from southwestern Oklahoma, was perceived by a lot of folks Oh, Dave McCurdy's gonna, gonna kill Inhofe. Mm -hmm. Guess what happened? It's just the other way around. Mm -hmm. Inhofe did it essentially on a couple of issues. Gun control was the overriding mm -hmm. issue. Uh, God in schools was another one. Everywhere Inhofe went, he talked about we gotta put God and prayer back in schools. And he made it into the, the, the issue of second most importance and McCurdy was lost. He, did, he didn't know what to do, how to combat it. And he had also aligned himself with Bill Clinton's gun ban gun control uh, issue. So uh, uh, Inhofe uh, cleaned McCurdy's clock, if you will, and he's been reelected, what, three times since or mm -hmm. twice since. Uh, and he, he, he is tough. And Andrew Rice, who is a first-term senator, I mean, he's, been, he's had one year of legislative experience, uh, I, is aligned with the most liberal elements of the Democratic Party in the state and nationally. And I just don't see him with any traction. 
And the first thing, I still think there's going to be some other Democrats getting into, on, on the Democratic side, so he'll face a primary. I'm not too sure he can make it all the way to a primary. He's out front and early, and he's trying to raise money. We'll see how he does. We just got about 30 seconds left, and I know better than to try to keep you to 30 seconds on any question. Never I'm going to throw it out anyway. Uh, OG&E in Chesapeake got into this issue over coal versus natural gas and the power plant. Treasurer Scott Meacham got in. What was Meacham thinking when he went, decided that he was going to put the treasurer's uh, job on the, on the line? There? Uh, good, good question, but it, 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 I mean, you got, he wound up talking about, as we were discussing off air, wound up talking about global warming as part of it. You got to wonder, you think he's shooting for a, a job in the uh, Democratic administration in mm -hmm. Washington if uh, that occurs next year? Who knows? Is he going to run, he gonna run for governor? Well, I think he'd love to. Yeah. I mean, he's the heir apparent. Mike McCarville, our guest today on The Verdict. We're going to have Mike back again next week. He may not know it yet, but he's going to stick around, and we're going to tape another show for you. For Kit Myers and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and me, this is a special treat. Kit and I will have a final word after this. Uh, we get Mike off the set. Good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. We're back to wrap up another show of The Verdict. Our guest today was Mike McCarville, and uh, we're going to have to keep him around and do another show on it. To be continued. Yeah. Yeah, so and we'll, this one was called um, More from Mike McCarville. The next show will be called Even More from Mike <laughs> McCarville. Uh, yeah. One thing about Mike I think is worth uh, mentioning that we've probably said before, but uh, I know this is you and I agree on this, that uh, he was able for years and years and years to run a talk show that was both interesting and civil. And uh, those talk shows nowadays sometimes are neither. Mm -hmm. uh, or if they're one, they're not the other. But he was able to do both in a way that uh, uh, I think his listeners appreciated. I know I appreciated. And uh, we're just glad that he'll come give us his time to tell us about what he thinks is going on in Oklahoma. Well, he does his homework. And it, and it, he, he's, and it he's credible. He's not just spouting off. He, uh, he has things to back up his opinions. That's exactly Mike right. McCarville, our guest today on The Verdict. We appreciate Mike for coming back. And he'll be on next week again also. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. And, oh, I want to give uh, Mike's uh, web address away before I go away. Um, here it is. Do you want to write this down? Because if you've not been to this website and you at all enjoy discussing uh, politics and what's going on in that arena, this is a website you're going to want to see. www.tmrcom.blogspot.com. I'll give that to you again. And, and note there's no, there's no dots here at the beginning of this. www.tmrcom.blogspot.com. Mike McCarville's website, a lot of in information there, and you can also email Mike McCarville and give him your opinions. We also have the Verdict website. You can go to our website and tell us about a show that you'd like to see on a future edition of this show. That uh, web address is theverdict.tv. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We will see you next time right here with Mike McCarville on The Verdict.
The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.